good evening all today we are going to discuss in this particular slides basic of wireless where we are covering two topics one is broadband wireless channels fighting in bwc so these two topic we have to cover in this particular video broadband wireless channels see you must be knowing that in wave propagations that is moving from one transmitter or base station to another base station where the transmit receiver as a transmit okay the signal is getting received and from there the signal is getting downlink towards the another subscriber this is taking place many losses at this this losses which is been occurring due to shadowing attenuation effect maybe because of spatial distance okay due to obstacles building mountains or maybe a uh, curvic okay earth cover terrain the signal is getting little bit loss in the strength and that is known as fading fading is your attenuation phenomena in wireless channels likely for short distance caused by reception of multiple version of same signal so the multiple received version are caused by reflections because of the Uh, so many buildings and other obstacles, or maybe because of scattering, the things are getting affected and that is getting delayed. Okay, adding some okay some delay factor, uh, reaching to the many multi path to the receiver that reverses multi that referred as multi path. So from here. the same signal is going and then going to okay uh, from the earth terrain it is reaching to its destination receiver and the signal which is been deviated reflected or scattered from the building iron building in the metropolitan uh, metropolitan areas and urban areas that is uh, many one signals become so many signals so it become multi path and the signal is getting having a loss that is in the way in the transmitting or in the path that is known as path loss and that is called we are calling it fading the multiple received version of the caused by the reflection that are referred as the multi path the reflection may arise at very close to the same time okay, the delay fading effect so you can see very clearly when some of the reflections arrive at nearly the same time okay delta t t plus delta t Where refraction of the time it is arriving late because of due to reflections, due to scattering effect, or long distance to be traveled by the uh, obstacles. Okay, the combined effect of these reflections was in figure below. Depending on the phase difference between the arriving signals, of course, that is a changing angles is getting changed, phase is getting changed. The interference interference. can be either constructive or destructive which causes very large observed difference in the amplitude of the received signal even over very short distances okay so you can see here the clear diagram where it is having okay this is uh, getting okay we are having uh, the difference between constructive interference top and de destructive interference bottom at 4 equal to 2.5 gigahertz is less than nanosecond in phase so this is a only little bit which correspond to the about 3 cm okay so this figure you can see the things then moving the transmitter or receiver even very short distance okay can have dramatic effect on the receive amplitude even though the path loss and shadowing effect may not have changed at all time varying tabulae line 
channel model of fading. Either the transmitter or receiver move related to each other. So it may happen subscriber which is moving connected to the base station. Okay. It is while moving and talking and that is connected to the distance okay uh, subscriber across the city okay definitely on on the pedestrian or uh, maybe on the city areas definitely there what is happening either the transmitter or receiver move related to each other okay the channel response ht will change and there this channel response can be taught as having two dimension one is delay dimension to another is time dimension so delay to correspond to how the long channel impulse response lasts that can you see the diagram here very clearly that okay this is the thing where fading effect the channel is time varying so that channel impulse response is also function of time that you can see that at okay to and to t to is uh, we already we have seen okay to is a delay dimension and t is time dimension so they are the function of okay and that can be quite different at the time of t plus delta t delta is small fraction of the time is added to time delay time of the waveform to the receiver since the channel change over the distance and hence time also values of of this uh, t1 t0 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 in terms of h1 h1 or hv may be totally different at the time of okay versus the fundamental function used for the statistically described dot band fading channel is two dimensional autocorrelation functions and this autocorrelation function is defined as down you can see that above where the equation y sense is stationary uncorrelated scattering which is the most popular model for wide band fading channel there are so many models two raised models statistical models which we are going to okay discuss later other slides other okay uh, i'm going to talk some other time now videos now we have to talk about delay spread delay spread what is delay spread multiple impulses of varying power correspond to the various multipath this time dispersion also referred to as multipath delay spread so you have understood the waveform which is moving to the destinations in between it is so many obstacles high end building or maybe other obstacles that is scattering or reflecting effect that is creating more multipath okay sub part of the wave radio frequencies whatever it is that is reaching to the destination after little bit delay in the time okay delay spread or time spread function of the things it is happening so this this part we are studying here that is known as delay spread delay spread it is nothing but multiple impulses of varying power correspond to the various multipath this time this person also referred to as multipath delay spread delay between first signal path and last signal path is loosely termed as channel access delay spread two totally different channels can have the same access delay spread and that is known given down a better measure to delay spread is rms value delay spread rho t and l is the number of path b is the amplitude of the path i arriving at time this is giving rho t rho 2 square minus 2 okay square then minus this is shown as the value of summation of all for the l number of the path one path but now we have today 1 to l so many path it is multiple path and that is given by this formula okay that is the second moment coherence bandwidth we have understand the delay spread we have to talk about coherence bandwidth bc the maximum delay spread is t max to max characterize wireless channel with number of delay taps versus will be needed in the discrete representation of channel impulse response since v equal to to max divided by ts 
where the PS is a sampling period. Two RMS value gives a measure of the width or spread of the channel response in time. A general rule of thumb is that T max is almost equal to 5 RMS, 5 to RMS, RMS value. Coherent bandwidth. What is coherent? A statistical measurement of the range of frequency over which the channel can be considered flat. The BC is the frequency domain due of the channel delay spread. Okay, the coherent bandwidth is the frequency domain dual of the frequency delay spread. 2 max is the value describing the channel duration and BC is the value describing the range of frequency over which the channel is stay constant. You got it? Where the frequency over which the channel remains stay constant that is known as coherent bandwidth. Okay, there is no variation in that and that is giving channel delay spread and it can be shown as BC equal to 1 by 5 or 2 RMS value. Coherent bandwidth, you can see here where okay, time is spreading coherent bandwidth. You see, flat fading is shown. Uh, uh, you see from figure which is double, W, which is less than the frequency zero, coherence bandwidth F0. Okay, here in first part, first diagram. Second figure, it is showing the W flat fading is greater than the frequency coherence bandwidth. Okay that is coherent bandwidth it is f0 that is more bigger more than okay w is greater than more zero this is the thing so this is channel frequency response against frequency you can see how how the power of this h value of the frequency it is power is increasing time variant behavior of the channels coherent bandwidth you can see the transmitter base station it is gone to waves are scattered or reflected one uh, the same way it is reflected okay to the subscriber another is going to line of sight and maybe another obstacle it is going out of these three that is impulse response is getting okay access delay spray it is reaching with little bit okay adding up little delay that is the time is taking up Okay, this is the diagram we have seen here. The same thing we have seen impulse response. We have shown excess delay spread down diagram. There we can see relative movement between transmitter receiver of object between those causes variation in channels characteristics over time. And this happened due to the propagation path change over time. Relative movement also creates frequency spreading due to Doppler effect. Always we are having three types of uh, loss while we are propagation wave propagation one is space okay any okay signals or wave it in the space is spreading spreading loss another is time loss third is okay frequency loss these three things we have to take care and uh, that is happening in the propagation and uh, those things can be eliminated by using many models and giving some diversity technique over that basic Doppler but before that we are going in detail okay next topic see we have studied okay maybe in uh, physics in 12 uh, what is the Doppler effect okay where you can see that uh, if the two objects are stationary, they are not moving, then you can easily say that the, what is the distance and what is with the time, what is the velocity of that. So there will not be any changes in the, okay, uh, any approach of the, okay, object and you can calculate it easily. But when the body object are moving, one object or both objects are moving either going away or approaching towards each other there we have to bring into uh, some phenomena that is known as Doppler a Doppler effect uh, that we have studied that is from one wave but we are talking about LTE where LTE is using OFDM multi output ME, MI, MO output multiple input where the waves are okay modulated with the sub carriers 
okay where the carriers of the wave of the okay of the signals is modulated with the sub carriers of the channels okay multiplex channels wave there we are having uh, we are assuming that input there are two transmitter okay two base station or we are having multiple input carriers at a time taking place that is for LTE is taking that's why we are having effect here multiple okay that there what we have to do so that we have to study more on Doppler effect how it is taking place for one transmitter signal we are having always carrier I always say carrier is sinusoidal the cosine 2 phi FCT receive signal always with the time how much time it takes t become after some certain tau and t the delay delay of the time that will be tau t which is being taken and that is delay can be time it can be defined okay vm dot t divided by c c is the velocity okay of the light and that will be becoming theta delay of the theta angular angular form of the angle okay fc plus fd so fc you see that t taken out and there it's fc and fd where fd become vm by c fc doppler frequency so now onwards doppler is affects okay how exactly we are doing it for lt that is playing a major role doppler effect is multipart so i told this is single single carrier transmissions which is taking place of calculations okay for the smooth uh, changing over the okay all uh, our subscriber okay channels to the destination but if it is multipath then it become multipath in such one carrier but it become multipath with the various okay due to reflection due to scatter this become multipath okay so there also we are only okay on same signals that is uh, mean transmitted with the and that is become multipath in terms of delay path delay and time so this we can see after passing to the multipath channels how it is happening okay fc plus fd1 okay plus fc plus fd2 frequency that is the thing due to multipath the single channel side by the base station perceived as summation, summation of three okay sinusoidal wave fc plus fd1 fc plus fd2 or fc plus fd middle frequency which is fd the maximum doppler frequency which we have seen on uh, top you have seen okay this is due to different arrivals of angle due to multipath perceived velocity different for the multipath coherent time time variant and channel coherent time Multi maximum Doppler frequency is an important measure for time variance of the channel's characteristics. It depends on relative speed of any movement between transmitter and receiver and the carrier frequency. So, current time is nothing but approximate time duration over which the channel response remains invariant, means stationary. That's called current time. That we have seen the figure diagram, okay. That way we have seen, okay, where the things we have seen here, you can see here, that is the time, where the current time that is taking, where it becomes stationary, there is no. So this is the things we have to, okay, coherent time, we have to see. So that becomes equal to 1 by D and 1, FD is nothing but maximum Doppler frequency, maximum Doppler frequency. Conclusion. If the transmitters are moving fast related to each other and the Doppler is large, the chain, channel will change its behavior much more quickly than if the transmitter receiver are stationary. Of course, okay, the calculations of okay, uh, providing the technology to smooth transactions of okay, transmitting the signals from one end to another end definitely it is more difficult while the both the objective transmitter at the one end uh, which is subscriber connected to the calling party to the call party which is connected to the destination receiver multi uh, base station there it will be more difficult while they are moving okay away or we are in movement
Okay, their Doppler is playing a major role in high frequency mobility and channel making to 100 times per second. Okay, that you will see that why it is happening. It results placing the large burden on overhead channels and channel estimation algorithm we have to change, making a junction accurate transmitter channel knowledge questionable. Additionally, the large Doppler in high mobility and frequency can also degrade the orthogonal frequency division multiplexing subcarrier orthogonally. Okay. So that the radar technology are also using Doppler technology. Okay. Right. That's all. Thank you very much. This is that much in today's video.